I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and you have a lot of Android choices on all the different carriers in the U.S., but there's some awesome high-end Android phones out there. One of those is the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, available now on AT&T for 250 bucks. But then you have the Motorola Droid Razor on Verizon, both 4G LTE capable devices, both have dual core processors, both have 8 megapixel cameras, but only one can win in the dogfight. Into the browser we go, and you can see it's loaded up on the Skyrocket already, just because I've been having some issues with AT&T's 4G LTE in the Charlotte area today. It seems like it's having some ne uh, they're having some network issues, and you'll see it fluctuate, but I wanted to make sure yeah, it started up. But then you have 4G LTE over here on Verizon as well. Let's load up PhoneDog.com. Let me pull it back here so I can actually see, so I can load it up. There we go. Perfect. And PhoneDog's loading up over here. Uh, as well on Verizon's 4G LTE. Now, pinch to zoom, pretty decent on both of these devices. You can see very fluid over on the Skyrocket as well. And what I really like about this phone is when you zoom in, like, let's take a look at my top five Android phones list uh, that was just completed a little bit earlier. You can see a picture there, pretty bad picture, honestly. So we're going to go over here, we're going to go to Windows, and you can see picture is frozen there. I go to a new window, and let's say I want to go back where I left off. So I come back, and I say I want to keep reading that uh, the top five list. I can come back over here, click right on it, and pick up right where I left off on this device. Now over here, you do get a similar, you know, obvious feature over here, and you can see pinch to zoom is pretty responsive and on the uh, Droid Razor as well. But when you go over here and you go to add a new window, it just shows you text. It doesn't actually show you a preview of where you left off or any sort of picture or anything like that. So that might be a little bit frustrating for you if you're, uh, you know, coming from TouchWiz or you're coming from Sense, be it 3.0 or 3.5, any of the past versions of Sense where you're used to that preview, you don't get it over here on the Motorola side. So that's the browser. Both of these are pretty decent. In the browser department, one area though where they separate themselves, camera department, eight megapixel camera on both of these with 1080p HD video recording. I'm gonna bring over a pin here so we can take a quick camera test and see which one comes out on top. So we're gonna load that up and we're gonna do, actually I'll tell you what we'll take a picture of. We're gonna take a picture of, um, we're gonna take a picture of these sunglasses instead. So we're gonna load these because I wanna get a focus in on the, uh, the design of the sunglasses and see what we can do in terms of focus here. So you can see no physical button over here, half press to hold, full press to take the picture, and you get your autofocus, like I said, with a half press. So you can see there it is over there, and pretty easy. A pinch zoom, still very responsive over here, and the quality looks pretty decent. So I'm going to bring these back over for the Motorola Droid Razor, and don't get me wrong, the picture quality is pretty decent over here. What I've noticed, though, is the, uh, the colors aren't as good uh, on the Droid Razor as they are. Still a decent picture, like I said. Not bad at all, but the uh, Galaxy S2 Skyrocket takes it in terms of overall picture quality. So you can see that's pretty doable as well. And they're both going to be fine, uh, be it on the phone or you know taking the casual picture outside or you're emailing it to mom or dad. You're really not going to have an issue with either of these devices, but uh, the Skyrocket does pull slightly ahead. And over here as well, you don't get a physical camera button. It's half press to focus in, and then when you want to let go, you can or you can... Uh, Remove your finger off the device and it'll take the picture automatically. So you can do it that way, of course. Options to change over to the front facing camera and to video camera, and then your settings are down here in this little pull out drawer right here, and you can change lighting, white balance, and more. And over here on the Skyrocket, similar setup. We'll go back out to uh, the pictures, and you can see picture, or uh, camera rather, video camera, front facing camera, flash on or off, and then your settings are all right here. So again, very easy with both to configure that and set that up. But let's take a look at Quadrant Standard on both of these devices. We'll load that up and I'll tell you a little bit about the uh, overall usability of these devices while it's loading. So let's go over here, Quadrant Standard, there it is. And we'll run the benchmark on both of these devices. Now, call quality has been very good on both of these devices. The earpiece is nice and loud. You're not gonna have any issues with reception. I haven't really seen anything that jumps out on either of these devices. What I will say though, is Motorola is known for an excellent wireless radio. And that stands true on the Droid Razor. The wireless radio is fantastic. I took it to a dead spot, a Verizon dead spot in Northeast Charlotte. And the calls are choppy. They're a little bit hard to understand, but it maintained the call. Same thing over here. Call quality has been pretty decent. Though if you're in an area, be it with AT&T or Verizon, where you're in a fringe area, that Motorola one is going to do slightly better. And obviously we're comparing two different carriers here, but the wireless radio is just second to none in the Droid Razor. Still very good on the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket though, but what I will say uh, is it's not quite up to par. Still pretty decent, but not as uh, not as amazing as the Droid Razor. So we may have to run this one again because they're having some pretty severe network issues uh, on this device. But you can see here, 2,200 and 85 on the Droid Razor, so 2,200 
285. Now, you know another place you can walk out working? Best Buy Mobile. When you go into Best Buy, you walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, your web, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go. So they'll set up your call settings, they'll set up your voicemail, help you set up your voicemail at least, they'll help you set up your web settings, and more. So let's load this up again on the Galaxy S2 and see where we stand. So there we go, 3,335 over here, and then on the Droid Razor, 2,285 over here. So a little bit faster on the uh, Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. Now that said, Quadrant Standard, take it with a grain of salt. It's never indicative of day-to-day -day performance. You're gonna be perfectly fine with either one of these devices uh, in day-to-day -day performance. One thing I do wanna highlight yeah. on, the call logs on both of these and kind of the phone applications, because they're both running Android 2.3, but they're drastically different depending on which user interface you're using. So like I said, Android 2.3 on both of these devices, but you can see the different call interfaces or the phone applications. You can see the buttons over here, call buttons in similar places. You've got back over here where you have voice dial over here, add a contact, visual voicemail, and then you've got the similar tabs up top. You have logs, contacts, favorites, and groups up here, and then you have recent contacts and favorites. And just to show you the contact indicator differences here, you can see that I've got some, uh, some contacts in here. So let's just say we're going to start a new one from scratch. We'll load that and we're gonna create that contact so you can see the different way that they look. So you got the opportunity to add pictures with both of these additional information like phone numbers, emails, IMs, and more. And uh, pretty nice and pretty, uh, pretty similar, but still different at the same time on both of these devices. So you're getting kind of a different experience. But let's take a look at speed tests. And AT&T is having some network issues with their LTE today. So I'm not gonna actually do a speed test. What I will show you uh, are the results between these. So you can see here, these are some accurate 4G LTE results that I've seen over the past couple of days. I've seen speeds range between, you know, as low as about three megabits per second on LTE, all the way up to 10 megabits per second, but I haven't seen anything faster than 10. What I usually see, 10 or 11, what I usually see is about four to six megabits per second and as you can see through here, right there in that kind of four to six, maybe seven max range, and it's a little bit of a different story uh, with Verizon's. I see speeds like 22 megabits per second, 26. I've seen some low ones here uh, in my home. I've seen seven megabits per second, five, and then 10, and you can see it's still kind of across the board as well. What I do find though is Verizon's, uh, as a general rule, is more consistent between five and 12, minus the burst that I get in the office because there is a repeater pretty close to my office uptown. But LTE is gonna be fast on either one of these carriers. That said, I've seen faster speeds uh, on Verizon's LTE, so that's something uh, to keep in mind. So if you're looking for just speed, 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 the Droid Razor on Verizon is going to be a little bit better, at least in uh, this market. Now, New York, they've seen some pretty fast LG or AT&T 4G LTE speeds, so that's something to, uh, to keep in mind as well. So all in all, both of these are great devices. I would recommend either one of these if you're a high-end Android user and you like that high-end kind of fast device. That said, it's a dogfight. Only one can win, so I'm declaring it to the Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. This is all around the better device in terms of specs. You get a big battery over here, 1,850 milliamp hours, which surprisingly, with moderate use, makes it through the day with some texting, some emailing, some calling, browsing the web, doing the usual stuff that you would do. It's also packing the latest and the greatest. It's got a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor. It's got a 4.5 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. It really takes everything from the Galaxy S2 series, which was already popular, and throws all those favorite features into, uh, into one device, which is the Skyrocket. Droid Razor, an excellent device on Verizon. Probably my favorite Android device right now, even with the Galaxy Nexus on the way. I love the size of it, love the way it feels, love the Kevlar, love the Gorilla Glass, and it's a fast device as well. Motorola has done some great things with their user interface. It's still not my favorite, but in terms of where it was with Moto Blur, it's a pretty huge improvement, but still the Skyrocket wins the dogfight. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices, so keep it locked on the site and be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're always do, doing cool things. We're giving stuff away. We talk to you on there and we have cool content. So be sure to check it out, facebook.com slash phone dog. Hey, I follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.